Hi everybody, welcome back, Adam here. In this video, we're gonna do a few things. The first thing that we're going to do is overview all the scoring that we did, all the different scores and differences between them. Then we're gonna select the scoring system that makes the most sense for us and apply it to all the other metrics that we have. Then in the next video, we're gonna learn how to deal with the metrics where lower is better. And in the video following, We'll go over how to create category scores and overall scores, and that'll be it for this scoring system stuff. So let's get started. We performed four different scoring calculation systems on the same data. The first thing that we did is we created a score from 0 to 100 that considers the maximum and minimum values in the data set. The second thing that we did is that we calculated percentiles or percent ranks, which is different. Then we calculated Z scores and then we calculated T scores. Let's go through a comparison of each of these scoring systems, just as a recap. And then we'll go through the iterations. So we're going to go through every single one. The first score, we take the maximum value for the data set and the minimum value for the data set and we give the lowest person a zero and the highest person a 100 and everyone else fills in in between based on where their value for cmj average in this case where it falls in respect to the best value so if it's very close to the best they might get a score of a 99 if it's far away from the best they might get a score of 50 or if they're about the average value they might get a 50. Then what we decided to do is we said, that's a pretty cool concept, but we don't want to include all the athletes from all teams together in that score. Because let's say we have two different teams. We have a team in the triple A's for baseball and we have a team in the major leagues. Maybe we each we want to score for each of those environments so that we can compare athletes to each other within those environments instead of comparing the athletes across all the environments. Similarly, you might have a team of female soccer players and a team of male basketball players, and you may want the best male basketball player to get a 100 and the worst to get a zero, and the best female soccer player to get a 100 and the worst to get a zero, and that's the reason for doing this. Then what we decided to do is we said, that's, that's pretty cool, but what if we want to give a score for each camp or each type of testing session that we do? In other words, Someone will get a 100 and someone will get a 0 for every testing session. So the way that you would explain that is that, uh, let's say training camp 2019 comes up and the person that gets a 100 did the best. We also consider the team. So let's say it's training camp 2019 and we have two teams. We have female soccer, male basketball. The best female soccer player for training camp 2019 will get a 100. The best male soccer player for training camp 2019 will also get a 100. And then if they do some in-season testing, there's another opportunity to have a 100 score there because we're creating a new score for every testing session and team combination. I hope that makes sense. Then we moved on to percentile ranks, which is very similar, except that it's a ranking system. So what we just described, we did the exact same thing with percentile ranks, but it's ranking not based on the how close a value is to the best value. So what I mean by that is if I jump 100 inches and you jump 99 and everybody else jumps around 50, that's not going to be reflected in the score because it's just ranked. So a 100, the difference between 100 and 99 will be treated the same way as the difference between 99 and 50 if 50 is the next best value. Whereas the first scoring system considers the actual difference in the values relative to one another when creating the score. So essentially we just did the same thing that we did except as a ranking system. Then we calculated z-scores, which include negative and positive numbers and consider the variance in the scoring or the variability in the numbers because we take the average value and we take the standard deviation value of whatever the criteria is, the same 
type of criteria that we took before. So we did three different z-scores. The first one, we took the average value and the standard deviation for the entire database and give you a z-score based on that. Then we took the average and standard deviation uh, value for the team that you play for and gave you a score based on that, so relative to your team. And then we did the same thing for the team and the event. So you get a z-score um, compared with the cohort for your team for the event in question. And we do a recalculation for every new event team combination that comes across our path. The final thing that we did was create a t-score, which is just a way of making a z-score less confusing and trying to create a score from 0 to 100. Essentially, a t-score is a z-score, but it looks different. It's like converting Fahrenheit to Celsius, if you will. We take the z-score and we say a z-score of 0 is equal to 50, because we assume that's the average of the population, and then we multiply... Um, what the z-score is by 10 to give it a difference based on the number of standard deviations that that athlete is away from the average. An example is that no matter what, so if someone has a z-score of 0, they get a 50, they're average. If they have a z-score of plus 1, which means that they're one standard deviation above the average, they get 50 plus 1 times 10. So they'll get a t-score of 60. And if there are two standard deviations above the average, which is way higher, they'd get a t-score of 50 plus 2 times 10, or 50 plus 20, which gives them a t-score of 70. And if someone has a z-score of minus 1, which means they're one standard deviation below the average, they'd get a t-score of 50 plus minus 1 times 10, or 50 minus 10, which is a t-score of 40. So instead of looking at a z-score of minus 1, we're looking at a t-score of 40, which we know is below the average because 50 is average and it's just a different way of looking at that same information. There are some limitations. If you have outliers that have very high z-scores, anything greater than 5, or very low z-scores, anything less than 5, you might get a t-score that results in a number that's less than 0 or greater than 100. So those are our different scoring systems. I hope that's helpful. And now I'm going to pick one and apply it to the other metrics, and, I'll and I'm going to remove the rest of them. However, if you decide to purchase this file, or if you just want to keep these scores and apply them all, that's, that's fine. It'll slow down the file. But if you purchase the file, you'll end up getting all this scoring system for every metric, and you'll still be instructed to pick one. Um, but in any case, we're going to pick one here and just apply it to all the metrics. And an important note here, don't just pick the one that I pick. Think about how you're going to use this information and how you want to interpret it and what it means to you and pick accordingly. Or create your own or create a different scoring system. That's, of course, fine, too. And you might have different considerations than I'm making, too. As we described in the videos, you might create a score per positional group or per something else and include those per age group or whatever the case might be, as well. So think about all those things and make a decision. I'm going to pick this uh, team score one, which, uh, this, which considers the maximum and minimum values in the data set for the team that, these, that the athlete is on. So the athlete that performed the best on their team for all time will get a 100. The athlete that performed worst for that team of all time will get a zero. And everything will fill out in between. That's the one in AC. So that's the one I'm going to pick. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove everything else. Like I said, there will be a file with everything else in it, and you probably should have this in your file. I'm just going to remove this, just so I remember which one I pick, and remove the content of all, of all this stuff. And we'll make this color all dark. Just, just for me, so I know what's going on here and it's consistent. Okay. Unhide all this stuff, and we'll apply this to all the metrics. Now, you might not want this for all the metrics. You might have specific metrics that you want to keep, but I want to show you how to do this so that things are organized. All right. If we want to start with our first metric, we have... In column J, we have CMJ trial 1. Let's say that we want a score for that. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a couple of columns here. Let's add in two of them. And we'll just call this equals. So in our first cell where we start creating scores, which is AB for me, AB1 will go equals the metric name or whatever's in J1 where our first metric is. And then I'll do an ampersand sign, quote, space, score, and close the quote and click enter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy what I have in here in AB1 because what we're taking, we're taking the name of the column and then the word score after it. I'll copy this and I'm just going to see and paste it across all these cells on the top and see where that ends up. See how we're at a certain point we're seeing score twice. That means that we um, have outdone ourselves. We, we've done too many columns. So let's look for the last score which is right here, bench relative strength score, and then we get into CMJ trial one again. So I'll go all the way to 18 and remove those. And now we have a column for each score that we want to calculate, or a column to score each of our metrics. We currently have the one for CMJ average, which is perfect. And this is really important when you do this, is that make sure that the CMJ average score is aligned correctly in our order here. So we have one, two, three metrics, then the CMJ average. Over here, we have one, two, three metrics, then the CMJ average, and then it goes on. Now we just need to make a, a minor manipulation. And I wanted to wait till the end to do this, and you need to contextualize this in, in your environment. And the reason why I waited is because you don't know, I didn't want to do it for every score, it would take too much time. But what we need to do is we need to lock in a couple of cells, okay? If you have conditions, then this is important. If you don't have any conditions, for example, if you're just doing a normal z-score based on the entire database, you don't have to worry about this. But right now, we want to consider a few things in our score. So we want to consider for this score when the team of the athlete is equal to the team uh, that the uh, the team in our database is equal to the team that the athlete is on at the time. And to make this work, what we need to do is we need to lock in whatever the column is for that metric or for that variable. So team is in column E, which means wherever we see the letter E, where we're referring to a cell reference, we're going to put a dollar sign before them. So min ifs m to m when E to E is equal to dollar sign E to, and max ifs, and we'll put dollar signs oops, before the E to E and before the E. Not before the two though, just before the E's. And for minutes, again, we'll do dollar sign E, dollar sign E, and dollar sign E, and click enter. Now, why did we do that? We did that because we want to copy and paste this score across to the other metrics. And we want the max what we're looking at to get the maximum and minimum values for to move alongside. Our copy and pasting because when let's just do one example when we copy and paste this to the left we want to look for the maximum and minimum values of column L which is CMJ trial 3 however what we don't want to move is we don't want our reference to the team to move that's what we did by putting dollar signs around there we said okay now if we copy and paste left and right the column for the metric that we're looking at will move but our consideration for the team will not. So we're controlling our variables that we don't want to change in our scoring considerations. Um, we're controlling them by not having them move when we paste this across, but we're allowing for the metric that we're looking at to move as we paste it across so that we can get a score for each metric. I hope that makes sense, but what this allows us to do is we can copy any of the either of these formulas and paste them across all of our metrics that we have here and we'll get a score so now we have a score for each metric for this athlete Jim Harding um, relative to his or her team how they fit within their team for all time for all these metrics based on their performance in this testing session now what we can do is we can copy all these formulas that we have or all these scores that we calculated and paste them 
to the bottom of our sheet. And we'll have a score for each athlete. Some of the scores might not make much sense because the metrics aren't made to make scores, like trap bar deadlift reps or bench press reps. If everyone does the same reps, uh, they're all going to have the same score, which will either be 100 or 0, but that's not our intention. We're not using the score uh, for this purpose or to represent performance in this capacity if we expect everyone to have the same value. And remember, another hurdle that we have to overcome is that the metrics where lower is better are not accurate or the scores are not accurate for those metrics currently and we'll learn how to tackle that hurdle in a couple of different ways in the next video. And that's all I got. If you enjoyed the video please make sure to give it a like and if you've been enjoying the content on this channel routinely please make sure to subscribe so that the YouTube algorithm knows that this content is helpful for some people out there. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I'm really excited to see you in the next video.